Sourdough bread is the first type of leavened bread ever made. And one of the neatest things about sourdough is that no two loaves will ever taste exactly the same. Now there's a lot of science happening in this little loaf, and that's why Dan's the right person to walk us through the recipe. So Julia, a lot of people I think are afraid to make sourdough bread at home, mm -hmm. right? It involves the starter, then you have to feed it, you can't go on vacation because you have to take <laughs> care of it. Seems like a huge commitment. It does. We broke it down, it's really not as complex as it sounds. And once you get into it, it's really fun. So we're gonna start down here, and we're gonna mix up the flour mixture that we're gonna use to start and then feed our dough the entire time. We're gonna start with the starter. We're gonna start at the beginning with the starter. Now, a lot of recipes we saw start with just all-purpose flour, and you can totally make it work with all-purpose flour, but we actually use a combination of all-purpose and whole wheat. Hmm. Whole wheat provides more nutrition for the yeast and the bacteria that live inside the starter. So it actually comes to life a little bit faster and we get more robust growth and better flavor. So I've got 25 ounces of all-purpose flour and then 24 and three-quarter ounces of whole wheat flour. Now I noticed you're talking in ounces, not cups, and that's because we're making bread. And when you make bread, especially a sourdough like this, you wanna measure everything in ounces because it's far more accurate. To begin our starter, we have five and a third ounces of water in this bowl, and I'm gonna add five ounces of our mix here. So I'm just gonna use a wooden spoon to stir it together. What's fascinating about sourdough is that everything we need is already in this bowl with this starter. And this is why different sourdough breads from different regions will taste different, because there's different types of bacteria in the air that then give the sourdough its flavor. It's like the ultimate local food, right? <laughs> okay, so that's perfect. I'm gonna cover this with plastic, and this step in the process, where it's really starting and really coming to life, takes anywhere from 48 to 72 hours. Okay, so that's the starter, but yep. what about the rest of that flour? So that's actually gonna come with us right over here. So this is a three-day-old starter. Oh, it looks much different. Now, I want you to give that a smell. Ooh, it smells almost like beer. Mm-hmm. Really boozy. Ooh, really boozy. And a little funky, right? Like, not, yeah. maybe not necessarily all good. No, right? not good beer. Not good beer. <laughs> yeah, a little bit funky. So the yeast is probably giving you a lot of the alcohols that you're getting, and that's reminding you of beer. But the bacteria is what's giving it that kind of edge and that funk. So that's a really healthy-looking three-day-old starter. All right. So now the next process is feeding it. And this is where there's so much folklore around what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Take it on an airplane with you. You can so hire you a babysitter. Hire a babysitter <laughs> for it. I've heard of that. So right now, while we're trying to get this to a really healthy state that we can bake with, mm -hmm. it's going to require a bit more attention. Every 24 hours, we're going to do something to Every it. Every day. Every day. And at the same time, really easy to remember, right, in the morning or in the evening, once it's established and really healthy and we can bake with it, then we want to store it. It's really every week that we need to do something with it. Okay, so now it, how long does it take to get to that stage? So it's going to take 10 to 14 days of this feeding. So the feeding process is really simple. I have two ounces of water here, and to that I'm going to add two ounces of this starter. All right, that's great. Now this you don't need anymore. And what I like to really? yeah, what I like to do is actually give it to a friend. Oh, it's like sourdough club, you know. <laughs> you start spreading it around. Okay, and I'm actually going to add in two and a half ounces of our flour mixture. Okay, and again, stir it until there's no dry flour remaining. All right, so this is what the first feeding would look like. Exactly. So every feeding, you're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to do that for 10 to 14 days until it's basically really, really lively, and in an eight to 12 hour period, it doubles in volume. Okay. That's your indicator that it's ready to go. With a little more plastic on top. This right here is a mature, ready to go starter. This is ready to bake with. So this is about 14 days old. We did that process every day. <laughs> it's in there. It's in there, It's yeah. not that liquidy starter that you had before. This no. is a real solid sort of thing. Yeah, it's really robust. You can see how small the amount I have there is, yeah. how much it's grown. That's exactly what we want, really bubbly. And it smells good. This doesn't smell quite as funky. Oh, that does right? smell good. That smells like good beer. Good beer. Not yeah. skunked beer. <laughs> Not skunk beer. So now it's time to mix up our bread. You can make a lot of different breads with sourdough. It's not just one style. Mm -hmm. We really like doing it with an almost no knead method. So we're starting with three ounces of our starter that is really healthy. Next up, I'm going to add our water. So this is 12 and two-thirds ounces of water. Okay. It's at room temperature. We're going to do our fermentation at room temperature, so that's perfect. I like to add the water first to the starter and loosen it up. It mm -hmm. makes it a lot more easy to incorporate everything in. Yeah, I was wondering how you are going to get that sort of sticky lump of dough evenly mixed into the flour. Because we're not using a high-speed processor or a stand mixer, it's a lot easier this way. So just add my water in. You're almost dissolving it. Exactly, yep. And break it up with the whisk. 
Okay, so now it's time for our flour. We're using King Arthur all-purpose flour. It's an all-purpose flour that has a little bit higher protein than most. If you can't find it, you can substitute a regular bread flour for it. But we like this, it's a bit more tender loaf. So I have 18 and a third ounces, and I have one and three quarter teaspoons of salt here. Just gonna whisk this in here. Flour mixture into our starter and water mixture. Well, I like that this is just a bowl mixing method. No need to drag out the stand mixer. No, it's really nice. Going back to basics. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm just gonna stir this until there's no dry pockets of flour. I really like a wooden spoon for this. It, it works pretty well. Mm -hmm. If you bake a lot, you can also invest in a dough whisk. Mm -hmm. which I aspire you, to own one of those. You do. If you, if you bake a lot, it makes sense. It's much nicer and easier to kind of incorporate all the ingredients. We have a baker in house that just absolutely loves using this thing. So I've kind of taken to it over time. Okay, so that's great. I'm gonna switch from my dough whisk here to my hands. We're gonna need this, not a lot, but just to kind of get it to come together a bit more. Yeah, it looks pretty shaggy right now. Yep, and shaggy is okay. Looks good. I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap and it's gonna sit at room temperature for at least 12 hours and up to 18 hours. All right, how do you know it's time to make bread? It's gonna be about double in volume. Oh, all right, that's pretty easy. Okay, so we have our 18 hour risen dough here. It's beautiful. Beautiful, right? I'm gonna get this set up over here for our Dutch oven, which we're gonna bake in. This is a 12 by 12 sheet of parchment, and I'm just gonna spray it. Little cooking spray. I'm gonna lightly flour this counter. This is where we're gonna do our work. Don't want too much. It's okay if it sticks a little bit. We can always add more. And I like to dip my bowl scraper, get it a little flour on there too, and use that to pull it out. I love seeing all the big bubbles on the bottom of the bowl when you pull out a freshly risen dough. It's so satisfying, it's isn't it? It's really satisfying. All right, so I'll set that aside. Now this is an almost no knead dough, so we are gonna do a little bit of kneading. Dust with a little flour on top. Ooh, that dough looks soft. So I'm just doing 10 to 15 times here, not very much at all. Looks good. That looks perfect. I'm gonna pull some of this in here so we get a little tighter top, flip it over, and I like to just do a little of this action, roll it around, I'm pulling the bottom in, mm -hmm. and that's gonna tighten that skin just a bit more. Looks good. So just go like this, transfer over to our parchment. So that's perfect. Now transfer it to our Dutch oven. This is one of the coolest parts of this recipe. So we found years ago that baking in a Dutch oven is really great for bread. It's basically shrinking your oven to this really small size. So if this gets really hot, it traps all that steam in there. And those French ovens that are steam injected, that's mm -hmm. how you get that crispy, really crackly crust on there. So this kind of simulates it in a very simple way. But what's unique is that we're actually not going to preheat this. So we're gonna do our first rise in this. So I've got plastic wrap here. Just cover this nice and tightly. So the natural yeast in the sourdough starter is what gives this dough rise, right? It works really well, great flavor. It's a little bit slower than using commercial yeast. It just oh, doesn't okay. metabolize it as fast. So what we need to do is warm up the temperature a little bit. This dough is gonna go on the middle rack. Now I wanna point out this oven is off, right? It is it's off. It's not even warm. Not even warm, has never been turned on. Well. Not today, anyway. So I'm gonna pull this out, and you can see that I've got a loaf pan here, right? Mm -hmm. And we have three cups of boiling water here. I'm gonna have you pour that in. There we go. Great. And we'll close it right up. That hot water is actually gonna make the oven about 95 degrees, really nice and humid, and it'll stay that way. So the yeast is gonna work a lot faster. So that rise is gonna take two to three hours, and we're looking for the loaf to not push back too much when we put our thumb into it. So it's been three hours. We're gonna check out our dough, and if you wouldn't mind grabbing the water pan out, we don't want that in for the actual baking. I'm gonna take the plastic wrap off, and we're gonna check to make sure it's gotten a lot bigger. Ooh, look how pretty that is. Looks great, smells good. Mm. Mm, that's awesome. So it's gotten a lot bigger. Our real test is we're gonna put our finger in, push a little bit, and we don't want it to really spring back very okay. much, right? So we're gonna look here. So that's perfect. So I'm gonna dust the top of this loaf with just a little bit of flour, which is really beautiful once it bakes on there. Mm -hmm. Bread should be beautiful. That's great. Now, I'm gonna score the loaf. Now this obviously looks beautiful. It's where the loaf will expand and crack, but it also serves an important function. If we don't do that, we get blowouts in odd places and it's not very pretty. So I'm gonna make a seven inch score about a half inch deep across the top here. And you can see it start to expand a little bit mm -hmm. right where I do that. My next step is I'm gonna cover this and this is gonna go into a cold oven. Really? Yeah, what's really fascinating about this process is everything kinda of happens in slow motion. Normally we'd have to drop this into a really hot Dutch oven that's all preheated, try and move it back into the oven. This way, all that steam is trapped in there and the dough heats up along with the oven. So you get this really awesome oven spring. I'm gonna pop the lid on, we're gonna go into that cold oven. 
and we'll turn the heat to 425 degrees. Bake for 30 minutes, then remove the lid and bake for another 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so we'd spend another 30 oh, minutes with the lid off. No better smell in the world mm. than freshly baked bread. It looks beautiful. We're gonna take a temperature. We're looking for 210 degrees to tell us that it's done. So this nice parchment sling that we have in here makes it really easy to transfer it out of the Dutch oven and over there. Because the dough doesn't stick to the pot. Doesn't stick to the pot, gives you a nice little handle. Pop it over here and just slide it off. Mm. Look at that. So here we have a loaf of bread that we didn't slash before baking. And if you can see that little crack, that steam inside the bread is gonna find a way out one way or the other. And it makes this really uneven crack that makes it hard to slice the bread. But when you slash the dough before baking, you give it the perfect place for the steam to rise and make a nice tall loaf of bread. And it's gotta be pretty, right? We went through all this work, right? and this is beautiful this way. So Gorgeous. we're gonna let this cool. We can't dig into it quite yet. Mm -hmm. We gotta let it cool down or it's gonna be a little gummy inside. That's gonna take about two hours and then we can slice in. Sounds good. It's time to slice it up. It's nice and cool at this point. Oh. That sounds pretty good. Listen to that. And here it looks like we have some salted, softened butter. I'll just do a little bit, May thank I? you. Oh, it smells so good. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Oh, that's awesome. Mmm. -hmm. Sometimes when you buy sourdough at the store, it almost tastes like vinegar, like mm -hmm. they faked it. But this is really delicate and almost floral. But this is a totally authentic flavor. Really, mm. really awesome. And like you said, no two loaves taste the same. So this is a really unique experience to have just this one right here. It's a Dan loaf. It's a Dan loaf, yep. <laughs> to make an authentic sourdough bread at home, start with a starter. Each is one of a kind as it matures in your kitchen. Let the shaped loaf sit above a pan of steaming water in a turned off oven to ensure that it rises high without drying out. Finally, bake the bread in a heavy bottomed Dutch oven until it's deep and golden brown. And there you have it, a traditional foolproof recipe for the best sourdough bread. You can get this recipe, all the recipes from this season, along with our tastings, testings, and selected episodes on our website, americastestkitchen.com. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.